Hello and welcome to this Bioanalysis Zone interview. I am Naima Mondrell, editor of Bioanalysis Zone, and today I'm delighted to be joined by one of the 2017 New Investigator Award finalists. So firstly, congratulations on being selected as a finalist for this year's award. And to start with, could you please introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is Matt Lockett. I'm an assistant professor uh, in the Department of Chemistry at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Great. What made you choose to pursue a career in bioanalysis? I think when I started grad school, I actually thought I wanted to be a synthetic chemist. Uh, and it wasn't until I met my PhD advisor that I realized that there was way more to chemistry than just doing synthesis. Um, his lab did a lot of different technology type uh, developments where there were genome and proteome and transcriptome technologies kind of all being generated at the same time, where the research was really being um, motivated by questions from biological collaborators. And it was that environment where I realized that, you know, I could use all of my knowledge, all of my chemistry knowledge to answer really complex biological questions and to help drive other people's research. You know, that was really attractive to me. Brilliant. Now, what skills do you think you need to be a good bioanalyst? Being infinitely curious being really creative in the lab and being persistent to push your research forward. That's what really makes a good bioanalyst. What work are you doing that led to you being nominated for this award? Sure, so my lab is really focused on this idea of how can you develop a 3D culture which is gonna be representative of human tissue. And so one example would be how do you make something that looks like a tumor and has all of the cells that are in a tumor and that is going to be able to allow us to study how different cells in that tumor uh, respond to oxygen gradients, how do they respond to drugs, how do they metabolize those drugs, and what in the extracellular environment is actually going to promote and um, drug resistance or promote the cells to become invasive. But the other thing that we're interested in, right, is as we develop this platform is how do you develop all the techniques that you're going to need to be able to analyze to say, what are the cells doing in my culture? How is the extracellular environment affecting my culture? And it's really easy to just make the statement, well, I'm going to take all the tools that people are already using and I'm just going to drop them onto my 3D culture and everything's going to work. And it turns out it doesn't work that well. And so the other thing that my lab is doing is as we develop these things that look more and more like tumors, how do we incorporate techniques where we could actually, you know, microscopically look at cells inside these cultures and see how are they behaving phenotypically? How do we develop the techniques and the assays that we need that will be able to extract the cells back out of these cultures and analyze to find out what's going on at a transcript level or at a protein level, right? What specifically is being turned on and or off in different parts of this tumor when they're exposed to drugs or when they're not exposed to drugs? And the last thing we're doing is we're also developing sensors so that we'll be able to stick them inside this tumor model and say, not only do we know how the cells are responding, but we'll know exactly what the extracellular environment looks like. Great. What impact do you think this award could have on the bioanalytical community? That One thing that we could bring to the table right now is a more predictive way to say, how is a patient going to respond to a drug? Or another question we could answer is, is something in the environment potentially toxic to humans? I think we could do both of those. And the way that it's done now is that you screen things and you screen things by simply growing cells on a plastic dish. And one could make the argument that nowhere in your body are cells growing on a plastic dish. And perhaps that's probably not the best screening method to predict how drugs are gonna behave. So on one end of the scale, you have something that's really simple to set up, but maybe not very predictive. And on the other end of the scale, what you could do is you could have a mouse model and you could expose that to the drug. And, but the problem there is, right, that mice are very expensive and it's a very low throughput method to actually test drugs. So I think that the platform we're developing and all the analytical sensors and methods that go with it will actually be able to develop a high throughput platform where we can generate lots of 3D cultures. And what would winning the new Investigator Award mean to you? And I think winning this award 
and, and garnering kind of the attention of the bioanalytical community really would be a nice affirmation that what we're doing is useful. And what we're doing is something that people can say, oh yeah, I could see where this would be helpful in my lab. And finally, as we're talking awards, who is your favorite award-winning film actor and why? Science is always really easy to talk about. Um, so I think probably the person that I would pick would be Maggie Smith. Brilliant. Well, thank you for joining us today. Remember, you can vote by visiting www.bianalyst-zone.com and clicking on the award section. Once again, thank you for your time and I look forward to hearing more about your work in the future.